I'm Annie Prayer with Brookville Farms. We're in Barnegat, New Jersey. I'm Michelle O'Connor, Brookville Farms, Barnegat, New Jersey. And I oversee everything that goes on. I bring a lot of stuff to the markets, community markets, co-ops, CSAs. Uh, we do kale, we do spring onions, we do a fairy tale. We do several different beets, bull's blood, golden beets, uh, cinderellas this year. Varieties of tomatoes. Heirlooms, lots of heirlooms. Delcatas, um, different types of radishes, daikons, icicles, shokum. And these are our root vegetables that we have. These are our bold peas. Same as well. They are just as sweet. Greens are good, good. You saute them that you would just like spinach. And then we have some spring onions that we were cooking some also today. Great. These are shokyo. We also do another variety, two varieties called the East Red, which are brown, pink, purple, red, white, and then we also do a black radish, which are not quite ready, but each week as it goes on, we'll be harvesting more and more. Integrated pest management allows us to uh, choose target species and broad spectrum species for applications. We grow using a plastic culture and fruit irrigation uh, system primarily. Uh, we plant through uh, automated planting system. We start most of our transplants in the greenhouse, 50 tray cells, and then we transplant them for a water wheel planter in the field, which allows us to plant a lot of plants with with economic sustainability so you know uh, what excited me more about farming as I got older was that the fact that these simple what techniques of planting just seemed to be more realistic than the old days where you needed maybe to grow 10 acres of uh, uh, crops vegetable crop you would need uh, you know probably 20 people in order to, to, to have the operation the right way either by direct seeding or hand hand transplanting which is just these days it, it, it just doesn't make uh, economic feasibility. What do customers love most about your products? The quality. The taste, the look. What do restaurants and customers say about your product, about your crop? They love our product and our crop. Um, one thing we do is we, we strive for a, for a product that looks good. Uh, taste and smell, firmness and consistency of stuff that when it comes right out of the ground. I can take, I can attest to that. I, you know, I, I, I can smell something fresh, earthy, you know, that's what I like to eat. Do um, you have any certifications or organizations you work with that help you in your farming practices? Yeah, we have uh, a lot of the uh, cost share programs here through USDA. Uh, we've been implemented on the farm. We have a uh, water management project that we're involved with. Um, We've gotten a lot of funding on the farm, cover crop reseed and go to seed, like the bees feed off of the uh, flowers and the clover that's there. And then when we start to harvest the blueberry, we'll mow it through. We have a Rutgers uh, deer control system in, members of the Vegetable Growth Association New Jersey, Direct Marketing Association. Well, I also take this year um, the SNAP, which helps um, people that can't really afford to buy vegetables, which now allows them to come to the farmer's market to be able to buy the fresh vegetables, which they also deserve. To have. Planting in a greenhouse now of just about all these beets that we have in the field so we can supply our customers all year, all year long, all season, which is important because this is a product that, uh, you know, we move quite a bit of. So we want to be able to, you know, provide it to the customers. And so we find working with a lot of restaurants is, you know, the growing season in New Jersey is pretty short. which is uh, good roasted. A lot of people roast them. A lot of people will uh, crock pot them. Um, we like to boil them and eat them cold in salad. A lot of the people in the, that uh, work out in the gyms and whatnot, they'll juice this whole beet. They'll take uh, the greens. If you look at the green, it almost looks like a rainbow Swiss chard or something, but it's full of moisture full of nutrients and uh, it makes an excellent juice. We start harvesting 
mostly April, May, we'll start harvesting out some onion, some kale. Uh, we grow uh, bok choy, which is a pretty good cold weather plant, which we harvest, you know, in, in late April, May. And then we have spinach. I mean, we grow year long. We put, we put our, our onions and garlic, we'll put them in in November and December. Um, we'll be harvesting some cold weather crops that time of year but finishing up you know everything after the frost some years we have so much in the ground we'll cover it for the frost so our growing season really ends sometime around uh between uh, um, thanksgiving and christmas uh we have plenty of product to sell up until christmas like, so you know what's what's um what's your uh, best type of customer is it someone that's buying every week is it someone that's buying in bulk is it someone that's buying the same product different product what's what's the best customer for your operation um you know any customer that 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 appreciates what we do really why do and they come back to you? like what do they tell you about your product that keeps them coming back um they're fresh they're uh they're a, a good variety and a good choice of what they're really looking for in the summer, you know. But the chef that I like is the chef that at least wants to make a commitment for, um, you know, the growing season that we do have in New Jersey because I think he can benefit and grow his restaurant a little differently like that. Are you looking for new chefs to, you know, uh, come on as, as buyers, as your customers? Yeah, we're always looking for, for new chefs and customers that you know can benefit from the products that we grow and of course you know maybe it allows us to be a little bit more profitable I mean it would be a perfect world if we were able to you know take a chef and make a contract with them and we do we have some chefs that we grow certain things for and every year it gets uh, that base that that base of chefs and people that buy um, gets bigger and bigger <laughs> by far because I enjoy it um, the economics uh, sense of it farming can be profitable um, it's something that we really do enjoy it's something that we enjoy together for a few years now um, I guess uh, the more experience you get the more uh, profitable it could be and the more diversified you become you learn what your customers want what don't want and uh, the secret is trying to, you know, sell everything that you grow. Um, there's no sense in growing anything unless you can sell it. And you have to be able to make money. If you can't make money, you might as well do something else.